Hey everybody, welcome to USA Wrestling's Moments Off the Mat. My name is Mike Clayton, your National Coaches Education Program Manager, and we're here with Zach Garrett from the U.S. Wrestling Officials Association, Tom Quisley, and we're also here with some members of our USA Wrestling Coaches Council and some special guests. So welcome everybody. How are you? Awesome. Wonderful. Good morning. Great. You guys ready to cahoot it? Yes. Do it. All right, Zach, it's all yours. All right, so uh, getting started, to the, the topic today is correct holds. Oh, is yes. It correct hold? Is it not a correct hold? Uh, I will have to say that of the seven videos we have, um, a majority of them are actually Greco. Yeah. Um, there are a couple of freestyle women mixed in here because um, it can happen anywhere, but probably more likely in Greco than in the other ones. But certainly it's a, it's a one that up a little bit so uh, that's what we'll be taking a look at and the first slide actually on this is just a video kind of showing a really good example of what it looks like um, and so we'll kind of get started here so I'll share share my screen and rules were a little bit different back when I wrestled Greco that was like 2003 <laughs> <laughs> we'll get started the first one the first slide that comes up is not a, is not a contest on this one so just a quick discussion point so kind of having a limited amount of time here. So again, we're, we're looking at correct holds. And so here's a really good example um, of a correct hold. I'll show it one more time here. You know, I think when we're looking at this, you know, I try to put up the, just essentially one question, you know, kind of what we're looking for here. Uh, is when they make an action, do they land on their hip or chest in the process and don't go to danger? So they don't go past 90, because if they go past 90, that goes to danger. And then we would score it based off our evaluation of holds that we had from week one. But here they make an action, it doesn't go to danger. And is this considered a correct hold and worth two points or not? And the question I think we're really looking for here is do, when they make that action, does it cause them to land on their hip or their chest? If the answer is yes, it's a correct hold. If the answer is no, it's probably not a correct hold. Um, and this is a good example of one. Um, a really nice action did not go to danger um, from that video. And as a result, you know, he landed on his hip. So, you know, simply watching this again, we should be able to see. So essentially, are we saying a correct hold scores? It does. Like, what's the simplicity in our head if, if we were scoring? The so, simplest way. Simple. I think the answer to that question is probably the simplest form. Simple. You know, so it, he took the man and moved him over. He threw him, didn't, didn't have exposure, but he executed the move and moved him from here over to there, landed on sip and stomach. That's two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, it's, really, it's, it's a really good action. They did everything right. They just didn't land in danger. And they moved them in the process. Zach, so. you need to explain that to you, Dominguez? <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just, um, you know, be honest with you. What's the difference between like uh, if a good lift where he goes hand to hand, and I know that anybody doesn't ever hit that elbow, shoulder, or head, Zach Garrett, that um, that they just wouldn't call that a correct throw either. It just just because I'm curious. Yeah, it really it probably could be. Okay. You know, in that process, I just know the other part of the rules too is any turn is worth two points. And that kind of right. falls under that category for that. So, okay. Um, but certainly, I mean, it's justifiable. Again, it doesn't go to danger. and It was a nice action. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, okay. very similar process. Uh, real quick, I know Tom's on the call too. Tom, we, we, we actually see this a lot in Northern Plains um, because we like we throw a lot of Greco in that tournament. We have a big Greco tournament. I don't think we've ever had a problem with it at regionals. Do you, Tom? No, it, um, it catches you off guard sometimes um, because – as an inexperienced official, you're looking for exposure on a throw. And if you don't see the exposure, then you, you're kind of reluctant to score it. Um, so um, the younger officials, you have to work through that process of saying, okay, did he land on his hip and his belly, just like Zach did in our first, in our first um, videos here. He gave us some criteria. And once the officials learn that criteria, then it becomes a lot more obvious. So... All right, so let's get started. First question here, first one. There's three elements in this video. One, is it a correct hold or not? And two, how about time? Oh. 
Oh man. Internet. I made a choice. I don't think it's right, but I made a choice. <laughs> I got a choice in my head, but yeah. well, so what you I will tell you that's a that's a great decision in refereeing. Hey, you might be right or might be wrong, but you just score it and put it yep. out there. Half the time people believe you. <laughs> I do that to JD all the time. I'm like, JD, just do it this way. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> hey, very good. Good job on this one. Um, so we had two blue for everybody, and then a couple of you had the timeout part, which was it was really close. I remember this actually got challenged um, in the match, and that was the big big question is whether this happened or occurred before time was in but we watched this again who scored why do those of you, somebody that scored two why did you score this two i just i just didn't like the move i didn't see the technique wasn't clean it's kind of you know i didn't see that there's a lot of exposure i just yuck <laughs> it didn't look like red landed in danger You have to remember that they don't need to land in danger. Mm -hmm. No, you said exposure, but it's her. She's got a headlock. She's holding on to it. So I don't, I, I just didn't like it. I didn't know. Yeah, I think, you know, when we scored it here, first of all, you know, in that process, you know, you look towards the end where, again, we're counting down, you know, in this process. So we can see that time was still in when she landed. And in this process, you know, as she moved, you know, and again, it doesn't always look, you know, it's not always like that first video. You know, I guess from my mm -hmm. perspective here watching this, when she did this, you know, it wasn't like necessarily the greatest of actions, but she did move her. And that wasn't too far away from going to be, from being four points. Yes. So, but the part is we're looking at, so going back is, did she move her? Yeah, I think she moved her. And did she land on her hip or chest? In this case, I felt like she landed, you know, she landed on that hip just before there with time was out. And so just without exposing, if she exposes, this is four. If not, yeah, two points. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, yes, up first. Ooh. All right, very good. All right, next. I hope I didn't select both of the possible answers here because there's only one here. Mine's calling this question three. Is that correct? We might have to disregard this question. I'm not sure. Oh, no, no. I, I got it right. It both, well, everybody <laughs> may have gotten it right, regardless of whether you got it right or not. <laughs> that's okay. We can all get it right. That's a good, that's that's right. a good thing. That's right. <laughs> everybody gets a trophy. Yes. Finally. Oh, I, made it I back. didn't hit submit. Yeah, so, that was a surprise one. That, that throws me <laughs> off. Yeah, I hit, I hit it quick, and then I sat there, sat there, go, I need to go off. And I hit it. Oh, okay, good. There's only one. No, I couldn't. All oh, right. Man, 50 50 here. 50 50 on this one. All right. Those who scored no points, why did you score no points? Because he didn't land on his hip or his stomach. Landed on his hands and knees with stomach down. Exactly. It, the big one, in my opinion, whenever I watch these matches, um, when we're doing work with, uh, with Gary and Matt, if they're not hitting a hip, the, the odds of it coming up are minimal for a two. And we used to we used to reward effort, and a lot of effort went into that move right there. You can see that. One, absolutely. That was kind of my thought. It, 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 yeah, that's what I was thinking. You know, I think that's a, it's a great thing. We used to score that. And honestly, when it was one point for correct throws, we were a little more liberal with one point. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. when it became through two points, now it becomes exactly the same as a takedown. And sometimes you're saying, was that worth the same as what a takedown is? You know, that's what, you know, where a game, it, it started becoming where these became more critical with the score, like you just weren't handing these out because that was a good effort. That makes sense. That makes that sense. was a great argument though, when you could go to the corner and just say, but look how hard he worked. He deserves something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's where we tried to look for like, what could we come up with of a way to try to be consistent with the calls? And that's where we came up with that hip and chest area is if it was a good enough throw, it caused him to land on the hip or land on the chest. 
uh, in that process. And that's why we can try to make that so that way it's a little bit more uniform and more consistent across the board, just not like, well, that looked pretty good. I think I'll score it too. Right. You know, because as a coach, Zach, you come over and I say, hey, that looked that pretty good, Zach. I think I just, I feel like I gave that a two. And you're going to look at me like, what, is, what are you talking about? Like the, re, the rationale. Well, I felt like it, you know, never a good answer. Ooh, Jackie takes a lead. Nice job. Ooh. All right, next. Yep, only two red. Who had who, somebody that hasn't gone who hit a who had two red? Why two red? Only. I chose two red only because um, even though he did lift it and he did put work into it, blue did. He red just landed on his hands and knees like in the last slide. Yeah, it was just a counter. It's a counter too. He's on his yeah. back. He countered him. It's hard to get a correct hold when you don't come off your back. Right. No slip to there. So in this case, only two red in that scenario. Good. Very good. All right. Next. Mark Greco. <laughs> yes. Yeah, There's too many more options. Choices are fun. Now. <laughs> There's a lot of options on this one. I'm gonna take a guess. I, and I think this is correct. I'm just, but this is a tough one. <laughs> this is not easy. There's a lot of things going on here. You got out of bounds. You got correct holds. You got counters. There's mm. all kinds of. I went with out of bounds, and I know that's wrong, but I don't care. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> yes. So here's <laughs> more than half of us think the same thing. Here's here's where we're gonna get back the majority. Opinion. To be wrong. We'll get Zach's opinion and it'll be wrong. It's possible. <laughs> it's not, it won't be the first time it's been wrong, I can tell you that. Probably not the last either. All right, so the two red, four of you scored two red. What was the your rationale in the two red? Just to go so head. hard. <laughs> I just feel, I mean, I don't know. I feel like he, he lifted him. I, I feel like that was him, you know, him in control of the lift. The only reason the guy stood up was, uh, you know, because Red lifted him. He had to be. A... I hit two Red initially, but he can't score. He's out of bounds. And then uh, he fell. Yeah. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it's hard for Red to – red to score here because he lands out of bounds and then comes up on top. So it's two separate actions. So I, I would agree with that part. Um, the other one score wise here was one blue. Oh, sorry. I went my bad. So I, I made a mistake on that one. Cause there's one thing I wanted to show you and I can bring up this video when we get it done. Once I can scroll back to the, to the main part. Okay. One thing I want to point out here. I think the one blue is certainly a viable option in that scenario um, because red does go out of bounds first. Uh, the one part that when you look at it, you say, well, this was red's move. I agree with that to start with, but take a look at red's hands in this process. Red's got a body lock and then when blue goes to make this throw, like he completely separates in this process and I can't really pause it here very well. I don't think I'll see if I can. Yeah. Cause blue sets his feet right here. Mm -hmm. And it's hard for me to say right now that this is not blues move. Right. In this process. Cause right now red is like doing everything he can not to go to his back in this process. And it, and in this case, if we go back to the same question of why I scored it to blue, was because it does look like it's Red's action to start with, but then Blue set his feet, took the action away, Red separated his hands, and then in this process, 
mm. red lanes on that hip and almost goes to his back. Like he's really close to almost giving up four points in this process. So I thought it was Blue's move. It started off as Red's, but Blue set his feet, took it, and it became Blue's action in this process. So that's where I was at with that. So you scored it one, Zach? I scored it two, actually. Did you? Okay. For a correct hold. Mm -hmm. I can't believe Red didn't expose, because I'll be honest with you. I am He's surprised. holding it right there. Yeah. You know, I think that's the one thing, too, when, you, when you're like, like, oh, my gosh, that should be four points. But sometimes athletes do a phenomenal job of not getting scored on. So you're essentially benefiting them by scoring that point. And sometimes they do an amazing job at countering it where they don't even they, – they, they cartwheel out, land on their knees. You know, that, that was them doing that action. So sometimes we don't mm -hmm. score anything in that process. So. Officiating must have been horrible in the original Olympics when they couldn't pause all those. I mean, so many things happen that you could only see on video there by pausing, pausing, pausing. It's kind of amazing yes. how many things happened. And before all this, you just have to make the call and go. Kind yeah. of amazing. It was. You made call, you went, and then a lot of times there weren't that much. There wasn't even however long, but there wasn't a lot of video. So even yeah. then, like, you couldn't even go back and watch the video, nor could anybody go back and re-watch a video later like we can on the web to, to, to critique every situation that happens. You know, so it certainly makes it a little bit more difficult, but I think having the challenge allows you to go back and look at some of those difficult situations. Lots of options here again. Mm -hmm. Oh. <laughs> the hardest part for me is determining which guy is which color and then matching it to the correct right. answer yeah, yeah. because yeah. the colors don't match. I, <laughs> I will tell you, I try to do a better job of moving them around. So like two yeah. red is with the red one and two blue is with the blue one. And then mm -hmm. I make them multiple ones, the different colors. So. I've done that twice now. That's <laughs> everybody says that. That's what everybody says when they get them wrong, J.D. No, I'm telling yep. you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at this screen. I looked out at the color. <laughs> All right, pretty good. So somebody walk us through what you scored here, 2-2. Two, two. Correct throw, then a counter. Yeah, absolutely. It was beautiful on both sides. <laughs> you know, if that, if Blue would have not hit that hip, he could have just – it could have been just, just too blue if he just managed to stay on his knees and then roll that guy through after the fact. Mm -hmm. Right. True. I think it, 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 he definitely hits his hip for that, too, so it was a good two red. Mm -hmm. The question is whether, you know, because he makes the action, so he gets a little bit of, like, reaction time to come out of danger. You know, so in this case, it, you know, looking at it, I thought two red was pretty close. It was pretty clear in that area is whether it was two blue or just mm -hmm. one blue for coming up behind him. And I think that's the part of, you know, mm -hmm. in this process, if he would have rotated the other way, I would have scored it as only one, but because he rotates it back towards blue, it's definitely two points in there, so. Absolutely. All right. Here we go, freestyle act move here. God. God. Referees are wrong so often. They don't ever. <laughs> wow. Oh, uh, man. How Nobody that? got that question right. How does that happen? Because the officials are wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I got to know why there isn't two. At least Ooh. one, somebody ends on top. I don't get it. So the first question I think is you have to decide if this is a correct correct hold or not. It's not. No. No. So if it's not a correct hold, it's a slip. Did Red make the initiate the, did Red initiate the action? Why is it not a correct hold? He did he it. Land on his hip. Land on his hip. Ah, okay. Uh, okay. Gotcha. Yeah, but I didn't think uh, slip. I don't know. I thought he need to wrestle right there. I went. That's why I went blue. <clears throat> I. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't a slip. He slipped there, you think? 
That's what I would call. Because yeah. if you take, oh, if you, because he he did, made an act from my from my point of view, Red made an action, almost scored, not quite good enough to be two points for correct hole, but he did go to the mat in the process. And what did Blue do other than land and then circle back? He, and it wasn't like he they wrestled through that position. As soon as he hit, he landed and then came directly behind. No, I feel like if I score that two points, then I'm taking away saying, you know. Risk is not a factor in this. Uh, Red, quit doing that because you're giving up points. This is where folk style screws us up. Yeah, so, I, I, Red put himself there. I get that. I just, uh, I thought right So did. you don't think of that as blue countering at all? Well, the only reason they ended up on the mat was because Red put it there. He took the risk. He took the risk. And I think that's the part. Now, if Red, if Red like tries to square up and face up here, in, in right this there. scenario, then he right could have wrestled. He's wrestling right there. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what kind of? Well, I guess watch, here, watch. here, better yet. I'm wrestling. I'm wrestling. Oh shit! I better give it up. He's got the angle. What, what do you? What do you think for good reaction time? Is it? Is it like a a time or is it just like I want to tell my wrestler, hey, if you miss the throw, you go to your belly, you stay there, right? You're gonna more likely gonna get the uh, slip call at that point. Um, is that the way that you think that they're being um, taught? or I, I shouldn't say Todd, but uh, shown what a slip is like overseas. Because I will tell you, there are more slips overseas than, than, I, than I'll ever see in the United States, which is fine. But um, because like Tom said, folk style ruins us at that point. Um, how, do we, how do we make sure that we as coaches and athletes understand the risk is good as long as you do this? Absolutely. You know, I do. I will agree with you. I think that you, and you, you guys have been here and been through this. Like, there was a stretch where we didn't call anything slips. Mm -hmm. Like, it was if it was an action, it didn't score. We but it was scored, and then that and that was the case internationally too for a, a stretch. And then it got to the point where it was reducing the amount of people who were willing to take risks. Mm -hmm. And so then it became a try to circle back into that position to get back. But like, if they make an attempt and it's pretty good. You know, and that guy didn't do anything um, came up on top. And in this case, I think, you know, it kind of, there's, it's, there's, I don't know if you can sell anything other than when you go down, if you make the action and it's really good, you'll know if you score on it. Like, you know, if he goes to danger, if you pop him, you know, the question is, if he doesn't do it, do you, should you try to get back up and wrestle through it? And I don't know if you can tell it. It's hard to tell an athlete, hey, make a throw and then stay down. You know, they're going to continue to wrestle through that. And I think this position has a lot to do with where he actually goes. If he ends up at an angle, like at a corner where he's already got an angle on him to get behind, you know, it's different than if he popped them completely out front of him where they ended up like head to head, like forehead to forehead in this process. You know, when I looked at this, I felt like he was, he was already on the side when he landed, like he landed here. So he already had an angle on him to get behind. You know, it was going to be difficult for Red not to give up a, a go behind in this process. Whereas if he would have been maybe like move this knee out to here a little bit where it was completely out front. Now I think we're looking at a situation where they could wrestle through that, that process. But I think, you know, anytime you make an action, Zach, I would just tell him make, you know, your the odds of you scoring are better than not scoring. But particularly if you do a challenge, whatever happens after this, because keep in mind, like this wrestles now because they scored it as 2-1 they wrestled another 15 or 20 seconds after this. If you challenge this and it gets changed to risk, like it was no points, we're going back to where that occurred and putting that time back on the clock and starting back on your feet from the point whenever that should have been called. I just, a slip to me was always just one action. You know, it was your move, your move, your move. And I feel like he stopped, he held the arm, the guy went behind him and he flattened the bellies out. I just... I so what's your... What's your view on a headlock? I throw a headlock and I hang on to it, hang on, hang on, and all of a sudden the, the head slips out. Yeah, it's slip. Yeah, it's a slip. But you know, if if you if I square up a little with the headlock and start to re, start to re wrestle it, and then I just let go and go to my belly, I think he's got a shot here to wrestle. And then when the guy goes behind, you see him flatten out. And I I didn't think he slipped. I don't think it was a slip. I think it was a just an average throw. I don't think he slipped it. I think he took risk. I know we want to reward that. But I think he had a chance right here, and he, and he thought about it for a split second. I'm going to wrestle. Came to his knees. Guy's got the corner. He's got, his, he's got my butt drag. He's got the corner. I'm going to flatten back out, and that's what he did, and, and go for the slip. And that answers that question on when do you bail out and sell it, and that's what he did. Yeah. I, I mean, right now, 
I have trouble not thinking he's not going to be – he's going to score on him regardless. Like, if, if it doesn't – no, and no reason two, blue. I love a two-one there. It's like a, what two red, one blue. Yep. Okay. Fair enough. Any other comments? I don't know. I know. I don't think this makes a lot of sense, but my like we talk about like rewarding action and risk and everything, but I also feel like wrestling is wrestling through hard positions, and like. I think about rewarding people who have good body awareness and defensive and, and like good defense, you know, like for me, blue, I don't want to like take away for the point that if we're practicing elbow cartwheels or head cartwheels in practice as like body awareness, chest awareness, back awareness, you know, like who's to say that he wasn't moving his arm a certain way underneath, you know, or, or I don't know how to word this the right way, but I feel like slips are slips are, are complicated for me to understand because I both want to reward the person for taking the risk and I also want to reward the person for good body awareness, you know, and like wrestling through a tough position. No, it's a great, great statement. Here's a question. Is the, their movements with their defending and their cartwheeling, is that, is that helping them just not, is, is the benefit of that just not getting scored on? Is that it's like scoring points without scoring points? Like if you don't have good defense, you don't move your hands, you don't shift your body position in the process, and you go to your back in this, you know, in this case he could have got four, could have got four points instead because of the good defense you did. You minute you mitigated that score, and now it's down to zero. You know, so it was like scoring points without scoring points. I guess is that a, is that a possibility in that in that thought process? Mm, yes. Could be. Yeah. The other thing that enters into this is that uh, a number of years ago when they were going to take the sport out of the Olympics, they hammered us as officials to create scoring everywhere we could and to reward risk and not to reward poor or sloppy wrestling. So I look at this as falling into the, to the area where red took the risk and blue did very little to deserve a score. So. All right. Hey, Jackie, what was you named? Cartwheel, elbow cartwheel, and another cartwheel. What was that? Other? Chest cartwheel. Uh, like, you know, like cartwheel. A, a head cartwheel or elbow cartwheels, you know? Like, we do those in warm ups a lot just to like know where you're back. Yeah. Is mm -hmm. Good. I feel Stolen. like creating that body. <laughs> No, I still get so torn in my heart because I feel like that's that's really good body awareness. That's wrestling. Is like knowing when you're exposed or not. You know, that's defense. All right, mm -hmm. last one. Ah. Two actions here, actually. Oh. No, oh my God. What? <laughs> I gave you more time. Don't worry. I gave you yes. 90 seconds on this one. I just got, you got to pick before time runs out sometime. My only Don't worry. You still got a minute yeah. left. I'll show it three times. Oh, too. well, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if this is right. What's going on? <clears throat> It makes it fun to watch, though, that's for sure. <laughs> ah, another bad call. Agree to give, disagree again. I know that's what this is going to be. It is. I'm sure it will Two be. Two red and one red. Give well, I can say the, the one part is that everybody was consistent. Was Everybody had two red in this at some point. I don't know. There was one two blue in here. So almost everybody had a had that a two was red me. in the middle. I was the two blue. The two blue. Okay. That was me. The first action. Let's I guess let's let's watch the two actions. There's two separate things. And I really I had to watch this quite really close for the for the second part of this. So the first question we're looking at is is that two red. red? A correct mm -hmm. call. That's correct. correct call. Two red. Okay, we're all there. So that was the first one. So that was the first part of is that considered a correct hold in this action? And we can agree with that one. I think that was too red yep. in that process. So yep. now we're watching the next part. This is where it gets interesting. Mm. So, so here's the first part. 
We had this before with the out of bounds. Are they standing? Yes. 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 So it's impossible to not score anything here. Mm -hmm. So two red for the first action. Now we have to have something for the next action. The question is, what's that second set of points? I thought he was on his back, so I went two for a counter. Yeah, that's what I said. Yeah. But it looked like by the time he countered, that blue was out of bounds. That's why I did just two, but now I see it. Because even that's if it's a flip out of bounds, it's still one for a step out. Comes to action, action, boom. Okay, lands on his head. See what so happens. In my opinion, red is still in bounds right now. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Yeah. Like he's still in bounds. So the first person who hits out here blue. is blue. So this is why I scored two red and, and then, then one, one red. red. Makes sense. I agree with that. that makes sense. That's, yeah. Yep. yep. No, I got, I got no arguments. I'd like to still go back and argue number seven. <laughs> <laughs> so again, because I, I thought he got to here. Now they're out. And then the counter came after he was already out of bounds. Right. So, Went out of bounds to come back in. I want a different angle. That's a good so, call. That's the first one I agree with. That was good. <laughs> hey, save the best one for last there so yeah. very good Zach, very good. all right good job, buddy. Bad. <laughs> not all bad right. not bad Man, let's see ones. who Ep my, not only was it a win on my board it says yeah, epic man. win <laughs> an epic <laughs> <laughs> that's cute i like that oh wow a little, a little confetti in, my low score. in the dancing that's great. I, this was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Anytime you need someone else to join, I'll I'll tag in. Awesome. Thanks for joining us, Nicole. Yeah. I like uh, not just – I mean, that was the hardest one for me. I'm sure that was my lowest score. Uh, I do think I was right the most, but <laughs> the score the lowest. Uh, but, no, the, the writing down, like, like last week, uh, Jackie, I, I guess I'm, it, not just the um, – the scoring but like you know she mentioned turning that one position into a game and I was uh, like with sharks to minnows and then this week she as she's talking about body awareness she I picked up three two types of cartwheels so not just the scoring but the just coaching tidbits for practices is, is also mm -hmm. uh, I really liked your ex explanation on the um, slip counter why you would look at it as a slip for instance does um uh, does he do that counter just to not get scored on, or was the counter taking over the move? Which actually makes a ton of sense to me. So that was good. I think this, Jamie, I think once again, uh, especially like the last one going out of bounds for that one, not seeing two, I think once again, it's camera angle on a lot of your bricks, what you're going to throw in. It's just, mm -hmm. you don't have, I didn't, I didn't see clearly on the other. Now, when I ran it back slow, but sitting in the corner on that other side, away from it, it would be tough to make that call because I couldn't tell he was out of bounds. It looked like he was, but you got to see it. If you're going to throw the bricks, you can't just think it, you know, it's like seeing mm -hmm. like a fish making a call. You got to see it. Don't just think it was there. Got to see it. After going through this game several times now, a lot of you have gotten to kind of be veterans on this game with us. What are your thoughts about how you're coaching from the corner as you see these happen and you see a call and you're questioning the call? How's it changed your thought process for using that challenge block? Uh, for me, one of them is, you know, there's there's three officials, and they're seeing it at different angles, you know. And I, I think like on that when red on that question number seven when red threw, and you know they're calling it a slip, and mm -hmm. I think sometimes like you get so vested in, of course I know that's my kid's move. He threw that. That wasn't a slip. Uh, it's a, it's a personal opinion. And since they don't know the kid and they got three different angles, so maybe slow down and go, well, what angle is he looking at it from? Uh, and, and he doesn't have bias, so how did he see that? So maybe it just slows down that brick throw. Yeah, I will tell you, when I, uh, if I ever do throw a brick, it's because I feel like the referee was out of position, not because he did something wrong, but because I don't think he saw what I saw. So if he's, on, if the, if he's catching up, coming across the mat, to look for the score and he's hoping that either the chair or the judge throw a point um, because he's getting there um, especially if I see the judge or chair throw a point first or the chair doesn't ever do that I apologize but 
if they're on the side where the judge is at and they're on the opposite side and and i know that the judge sees it differently than the chair to, or than the uh, mat ref does that's when my blocks can go out because the angle is better for the guy that i want the points from so if they have a confirm or if they talk a little bit about it of course they can we can work through it but I always just throw the block because I think he's out of position, not because he was wrong. He was out of position to see certain things. Um, and that's where the camera takes over. But if he's on the same side as the camera and in the same place, the odds of me throwing that brick are minimal. I'm not going to come out of my hand. Yeah, I think now I, uh, watching and kind of gauging if they're at the center of the mat, if they're in the zone, where they're at, I start asking myself, run through those questions and ask, you know, who's offensive, defensive. Now, like, now I'm starting to think more critically so that maybe I'm not as biased as, like, well, my my athlete's scoring, my athlete's causing, you know, the action, but also thinking about where are, where is the out of bounds who initiated, thinking twice about making that call and asking myself where where the ref is, where the judge is, and it, it, it instead of making that judgment in the moment, I think now ahead of time I'm saying, Okay, what position are they on the mat? Run through those questions and survey for what possible situations can happen. That's that's how I'm thinking about it now. It's much easier for me to sit in the corner because I know his limitations. I know what he can do. I know the other guy. I've seen him wrestle. For me to sit in the corner and watch it, it's much easier for me to, to make judgments while I throw the brick because I know what he can do, what he can't do because I coach him. When you got two perfect strangers and you run a video through, you, just, you don't know what to expect from them. I pretty much know what to expect from my wrestlers. It's kind of similar to Jess, you know, like knowing where, like going into a venue and knowing where cameras are so that I can decide whether something might be out of view or not is something I've picked up. Um, not getting overwhelmed with all the different things that might be happening and instead like narrowing it down to, like today, for example, did they hit a hip or a chest? You know, like narrowing it down to like some basic things to start my search for if points were deserved or, or like not deserved, I guess, um, is really helpful for, to, for me. <laughs> Cause I think getting like so much to keep track of, like where they're out on the mat, how much time is left on the clock, who's initiating the score, all of that is, a lot for me. So to narrow it down to maybe two or three things as like indicators is really helpful. Um, and then I guess a lot for me, different approaches on how to like teach this in practice to the kids. So that, um, and like game five practices to kids and coaches. So it's just a part of the culture, you know, um, I think those have been some meaningful things for me. The other thing I think coaches can remember too is, is that Sometimes, and, and you saw today, there were some very difficult calls there. You, the brick can be thrown not because it's wrong, but because there's maybe a better call there. And the points could turn out more in my favor. Risky, but in a close match, you know, that, that's something I think coaches can think about also. I think anytime you have some really crazy situations that occur, you know, and the referee scores, a lot of times coaches – focus solely on who, what the referee scores and don't necessarily pick up what else gets scored around it. Now, it's difficult as a coach, I think, because you're watching the action and you're still coaching your athlete and all of a sudden the referee scores some points that you may or may not agree with. You know, if I was a coach, probably the one thing I would focus on, I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even look at the judge to see what the judge scored. Like I would watch the referee, see what the referee scored. And if I want to check what happened, I would, I would look right to the Matt chairman. If the Matt chairman scores, then something else got offered. Or if he, you can tell quickly by the, by the facial expression or by what's going on, if they're going to call a conference and do something. But there's at no point would I like be back and forth. I would just look to see what they scored and then, you know, gives you a little bit of time to decide whether you want to make a challenge or not in that situation but I would bypass even looking at the judge because you're typically on the same side as the judge anyway as a coach. Yeah. So your eye, your your vision is to the referee, to the chair, a lot easier than it is to the judge. So. Do any of us run a strategy where our second coach is looking for just time, map position, challenges? And if you've got a second coach who does that, how much do you have to practice it? Because if I'm second coach, I might be so into the match, I'm not thinking about – those specific things, those few specific things that I'm supposed to check. How's that look for your coaching structures? Um, at the, where I coach, we uh, primarily, I'm never the first coach in the corner. 
I try to be the guy that's watching the wrestling and uh, the, the time and all that because it's easier for those guys to coach the athletes they work with as opposed to know the rules and do the athlete at the same time. So what I, what I try to do is put the, the other coach in the corner. I'll sit there with him, and then I'll have somebody that's uh, getting to be or learning to be a better coach uh, behind me watching what I'm doing. So that way, when I can't be at a mat, I'm training two guys at the same time. Uh, it seems to help my guys a ton because they're much more – they're not so worried about throwing the block because they're just like, well, we've done it before. It'll be okay. And if they don't throw the block, they don't feel bad either. But um, for me, I try to be what you said, Coach Clayton. I try to be the guy that's watching the refs and the score and the time as opposed to the guy coaching because they're the ones that are coaching. Usually there's most of us have a lot of time in on the sport. So our our professionalism is needed in that scenario more than sending the new coach or the younger coach to the ref to yell at Tom, which is really fun to do, by the way. <laughs> but, and, and Tom and I have a common friend here in Zach Wilcox. He's gotten much better over the years that now he's the guy that stands behind the, uh, the coaches and he'll go talk to the referees as opposed to, to the coach in the corner. If it you would have a lot of work, didn't it, Zach? <laughs> it did. It, it, it took a long time, but he's there. <laughs> so for me, I, I'm the only coach. I've got a volunteer coach that comes uh, to most events, but not all of them. And so I've actually been teaching my athletes to watch the clock. And then I have one of them that's recording or something sit in the chair next to me. And it's their job to tell me what the other uh, officials score. So that way I can keep my eyes on the match. So there are really three things. They're making sure the time starts and stops. They're telling me what the final score was called. And I have them specifically looking to tell me if someone's foot is completely out of bounds. So those are three things that me, as while I'm coaching my girls, I don't have to worry about because the person next to me is just going to tell me. That's great. This is great feedback. I think this is going to help our coaches out there a lot. From all of us at USA Wrestling, U.S. Wrestling Officials Association, our National Coaches Council, and all of our special guests, thanks so much for your time today. We look forward to seeing you next time on Moments Off the Mat. Take care, everybody. Bye. Bye.